Okay, so we're going to look at parallax scrolling this week, um, which we haven't done so far in Hype. So, so far we've been navigating between scenes, which are discrete streams using buttons to sort of jump forwards and backwards. Um, but it might be that you want to use um, some scrolling to reveal content, like in a sort of endless scroll. Um, and you see this quite a lot on the web now, where certain kind of sites will let animated content appear as you scroll through them. So an example of a parallax scroll is something like this, the Walking Dead site, which is really just a parallax scroll version of a graphic novel. Um, but what you'll see is as I scroll, certain things happen. And so we have uh, titles that kind of animate and float upwards, backgrounds that fade in. And then as we continue to scroll, so I'm just kind of pushing up on the mouse pad here, I have a character, which is a walking animated loop that comes in. And then as, at a certain point, the background uh, scrolls sideways and the character walks through the scenery with some speech bubbles popping up as we go. Um, and so this is really just scrolling through content, if you imagine in height, through the timeline. And at each stage of the timeline, certain things happen. And we're just getting there via scrolling. So here you can see an interactive button drops out of a window, which then is an opportunity for us to sort of watch some video content or some other stuff or to carry on. So yeah, something's happened and he's halfway to being a zombie at this point. Okay, and if we go backwards, just rewinds the site as well again. And away we go. So it really is quite a simple idea. We're just scrolling through a timeline and stuff is appearing, either fading up or animating in or out as we go. Um, and we can apply that to hype. So if we look at our project here, you can see I've rigged up something um, that parallax scrollers scrolls in hype. Um, hype doesn't kind of default to scrolling, so you need to just put in a bit of JavaScript that makes it makes the site listen for mouse events on the either the scrolling wheel or the mouse um, pad. Um, but once you do that. It's fairly straightforward, so here I'm just scrolling up using that, and then it's revealing certain content. I can go back. And so there's just some animating here, and then the secondary navigation, or this primary navigation, sorry, is fading up, and then I can click it, and it will let me go back to the beginning of the timeline. So that's fairly straightforward. So if we look in Hype, you can see how this is rigged up. And so, in fact, we've got a second part here, which is a reveal. So there's some opacity here and some fading up of titles and some navigation. So in Hype, it's quite straightforward. It's just as we've been doing. We're just animating and doing opacity and stuff like that along the timeline here. There's various points that things happen. And here you can see I've got a folder with my navigational elements in it, which isn't there until four seconds in. So then at four seconds, we've just got to fade up here. Um, and so that's fairly straightforward. So as an example, just to work with, we could think about kind of animating a splash screen. And here I've got all the elements that I need for that to happen. Um, and so I've got my text element here on the top, which is my welcome text. I've got a background color for that. So that's going to be stage one. And then stage two, I've got a second bit of text, which is here in another color, which is just off the stage at the bottom. Now, one thing we can do in Hype, which is quite good, is if we group layers together, Hype will put them in a folder and we can apply animation effects to that whole group in one go which is really quite useful. So instead of applying things to different layers, we can apply it to a group. And so here I'm just going to group this title text and uh, background color in one group. So just shift click the layers, then go to group, groups those together. You'll see it automatically goes into a little folder. If I double click that, I can just name it. I'm just going to call it home screen for argument's sake. Here we go. So that's all hidden away. The other thing is, after a while, you'll have lots of layers. So grouping things together 
means that you can hide them away in little subfolders. Um, and so I just want to, over two seconds, have this home screen fade out. And then as we scroll, this second element to come up and be visible. So very straightforward, as we've been doing. Hit record. Go to your element inspector. We're going to tweak the opacity here. Just move the timeline down, playhead down to two seconds. Fade out the opacity. So that's good. Um, and then what I want to do is just kind of have these two elements kind of scroll up but this high just to appear late on. So I can just go into here, shift click those, and then holding down shift. That's not quite straight, just put that in there so that becomes our new screen. Okay, and then on the high layer, I can just go back to let's say a second and a half no opacity there, and then fade up to 100% opacity here. So we have this sort of thing here. Now, one thing you'll notice with the little animation there is um, I actually want nothing to happen in the beginning here. If I just go into the properties here, you'll see for the high layer, which I've got selected, if I double click that. You can see I can get certain properties to do with that layer. Um, this bit at the top for opacity is going 100% down to zero and then up to 100. So to just get rid of that first part, just highlight that keyframe and delete it. And you'll see I've got a sort of subdivision now where it is the original left and top are changing, but then later on it's fading up. You can see just on that kind of timeline thing, there's a little line in it. And so this is what's happening. So that's going to be the sequence that's triggered by the scroll. Um, you'll notice I've also got on the timeline here in timeline actions, I've got a little pause. So you'll remember that we want to just pause stuff at the beginning so it just doesn't start playing. And just for argument's sake, at the end here, I'm going to put another timeline action which is a pause, <clears throat> just to kind of finish things off there. Okay, so um, what I need to do now is just to sort of trigger the scrolling. So if I launch this, you'll see nothing happens. I can't, so if I just launch that scene on its own. So if I just preview this current scene, nothing happens. I've got the pause on the timeline um, and it's stuck and it's not listening to any scrolling. So what I need to do is kind of put a little bit, bit of JavaScript into the site um, to make sure that it kind of responds to the scrolling. Now, this I've just um, found online. You can, you can use an appropriate code as you need to. It's a kind of given thing, you don't have to reinvent the wheel on no JavaScript to make things run. Often you can find code with comments in the top here that tell you a little bit about what it does. So describe what the functions are and how they work. And also sometimes we'll give you clues as to how to change it to um, appropriate it to your needs. So in this case, and also very often there'll be whoever wrote it will have their name in there and there might be um, fair use policy so if someone's written a bit of code but wants a credit or um, wants to stipulate how the code should be used um, they'll put it in the comment section so it's quite good practice to well it is good practice to um, leave comments in code to comment them yourself for other people who might use them and um, also to observe the comments that people make about um, fair use and to leave um, authors names and stuff in so we, we're using it we're allowed to use it we just need to leave the credit in there um, so that we know that it's not ours and that that it can be used later on by others 
So here, here we've got the sort of JavaScript function, which essentially says it's adding what we call an event listener to the site, which is listening to the mouse wheel. And then it's calling um, a function to do something. So down here you see on window document add event listener, um, listen to the mouse wheel. Once it's done that, it'll pop into this function and do something. Um, and so here you can see it's going to scroll main timeline. So we don't need to know the particulars of this. We're not doing a JavaScript course, but that's essentially what's happening here. We're listening to the mouse wheel and then doing something. And it's all wrapped up in this little run on load function, which is in the hype document. So what we can do is we can grab that. So I've just copied and pasted this from the resource online and then just pasted it into the on scene load area in the site, which I'll show you where that is. So a lot of the time we've been looking at actions via this um, little actions inspector. And we've just been using kind of default. So on mouse down, click the plus, and then it will give you options to do stuff if you've got something that you can. So let's just, for instance, click on this high. If I say on click, you remember that we've got some default options. One of the things we can do in there is run some JavaScript, which we can copy and paste in or write ourselves to do specific things. So you've got your kind of basic functions for what happens, but we can also add our own. So it's very flexible. We can do lots of things within Hype using JavaScript if we know what we're doing. For this particular mouse scroll, parallax scroll thing, we essentially need to load the JavaScript into right at the beginning so that as the site loads, it tells the mouse wheel that it's been listened to and then it will act accordingly. So if we just go to the uh, scene inspector for our uh, site, you see I can also add some actions in the scene. And you'll see there, there's a little tab there that says on scene load. And you can add some JavaScript in there, okay? So here I've got on scene load action. I'm just going to run some JavaScript. It'll say, what do you want to do? Here you'll see a function. And I've just copied and pasted the run on load script into it. Okay. So how you, uh, so I've done this already. Um, so it's there ready for me to use, but I'll just show you how to do it from scratch. So here, if I just put new function in here, I'll have copied this from elsewhere, so copy that, put in the new function here, I'll just go in here and then paste, you'll see it's all pasted in, um, and all I need to do then is to put in a name for what this function is going to be so I know what to call it. So for instance, let's just make this one different to the first one. And I'll call this one run on load two. And so here it's just this title. So what we'll have here is function in pink, so that's what it is. Then we'll have the name of the function, and then we'll open these brackets, and it will relate to certain things within um, within the site. So it's a hype document and then elements and events. So this is what the function will kind of be attached to, if you like. And so I'm just going to run on load two. You see, as I type the title or the name for that function in, run on load two appears in the tab and it's ready to use. So if I just go to my untitled scene here, on scene load action run JavaScript script. What do I want to, want to do? You'll see. I've just made a new function called it run on load to and then use that and away we go. So what should happen now is this scene as I test it should load and then as I scroll it should reveal this animation. And away you go.